In this video I'm showing you the Nambua community campsite just outside Kongola. I've been told it's pretty wild and remote and you need a 4x4 to access it so I thought it's the perfect place to start testing Frank's new engine, all the 4x4 parts replaced as well as the brand new set of Dunlop tires I fitted. It probably won't be the longest video ever, I'll show you the turn off, we'll stop and pay our park fees, then we'll do the 10 to 15 kilometers of thick sand, hopefully a bit of mud as well with the rains. <laughs> I'll show you the campsites and maybe tomorrow I'll wash you back. Maps.me says we're about one kilometer away from the turn off, so let's start looking. We're on the road between Divundu and Kongola. Kongola is only like 10, less than 10 k's away. Here's the first sign, let's see what it says. Um, Susue Island Lodge, 10 kilometers. I think it's on the same road as this one. There's a big sign on the side that says Namwa. The 4x4 Gateway, a bush camp 4x4 only. Let's see. I think this is Park HQ up here. Sorry, I've never been here. You can see I haven't. <laughs> so I think I need to pay park fees and then we can go on to Namwa. Park fees paid. It's uh, 30 Namibian dollars per day for me as a Namibian plus $50 per day for my vehicle. I'll put the park fees on the screen for one, two, three, four seconds. <laughs> and then, oh, how beautiful is this? And then she says it's 14 kilometers driving to Nambua camp. Apparently it is full. I did book, I hope they didn't mess it up. So just a friendly warning, book. This is one place that you always need to book. The advantage of arriving a bit later in the afternoon and during the rainy season is that the soil is moist so you get compacted during the whole day you might not believe it but the hotter it gets during the day the sand becomes more liquid but i think i'm gonna engage four by four anyway and uh, then we'll carry on much better <laughs> it's beautiful it's green the problem with that is, you know, it's going to be difficult to spot the animals. I did spot uh, a lonely kudu. Uh, for some reason my camera don't want to focus, but it take a cool picture. Uh, I'm not needing 4x4 that much, but that's mainly because it's it's been raining and it's in the afternoon. But yeah, it's, it's stunningly beautiful. I can't wait to spend three nights. We're doing three nights here. I'm doing three nights. We have arrived. It's out of nowhere. There's a campsite. Um, I'm on number two. That's this one. The road isn't that nearly as bad as they make it out to be. There's, there's patches. Obviously, this is the rainy season. Um, things might be completely different during the dry season. It's only that. <laughs> it breaks your chassis. Oh, this is it. Oh, there's a tap, a bin, place to bry. Looks a lot better than I expected. There's the river. Campsite number two at uh, Nambu Community Camp. Main attractions, obviously. I think this is the Kwando River, I should have asked. Wow. One of the few campsites in Namibia where I've been warned to look out for lion, leopard, hyena, at the, as well as hippos at night. It really doesn't have a Namibian campsite feel. Just think about the previous video. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it, yeah. Three days of this. Except for the bloody fly. <laughs> um, tomorrow I think we will go to Horseshoe Bend for brunch, go to Survival, whatever that is. And I think we'll end the video there. A bit more information about the campsites. The water is drinkable. I was told by the attendant or by the camp attendant. Um, obviously I just bring my own water, but I'll use that for cooking and maybe making my tea or coffee. And then there's pretty good cell phone signal, like proper 4G. I was working this morning, I was quite impressed. I did not expect that. So just, just a bit of extra information. And then the location. I mean, I yesterday I just sort of just let off. <laughs> yes, it's in the Mbabuatwa National Park, the Kwando core area. Oh, 
Moshu bent one hour later after stopping it. <laughs> I just ran into Shando and his wife and they took out a spread and we just had a nice little breakfast, <laughs> etc, etc. That was nice meeting. nice meeting you guys. So this is Horseshoe Bend and I think the plan is just to keep on driving. been a fairly productive morning um, after missing out on a leopard sighting uh, Shandu stopped and told me about one about two kilometers back unfortunately couldn't find it decided to park off here on the southern end of the horseshoe bend and heard after heard after heard of elephant that's just been coming in I've seen well over 100 probably close to 150 now actually I tried to drive around to get back from or just to get back to the hide but um, the entire bush is just full of there's some more coming it's just full of elephant that I'm just honestly just too afraid to, to drive through there. <laughs> On my way back, a decent day of exploring. Oh, I don't need this anymore. I was, I was just outside. I'm happy to say you'll find predators in the park. Uh, Shandu saw the leopard this morning. Other people reported they saw wild dogs as, a, as well as hyenas. I saw there's hundreds of elephants. I like that it's only 14 kilometers from the main road, the campsite. And from the campsite to Oshu Bend is only another eight kilometers. Very compact and small, easy to explore. So yeah, I definitely highly recommend if you're in the area and you've got time, come check it out. What I'm gonna do is, I'm heading back to camp obviously. I'm gonna come out early tomorrow morning and see if I can find anything, hopefully some uh, leopard or hyena, and if I do, I'll put that on. If not, I'll end this video at the campsite. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was informative, if it was please like and subscribe, please consider joining my Patreon for only 5 US dollars per month.